You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for February 16th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from, believe it or not, the op-ed page of the New York Times, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. It seems that way. We'll get to that. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> we'll get to that right now? Well, here's the deal. I do want to apologize to everyone who's been listening to the podcast for the past eight years and those times when Drift Glass says, we'll get to that in a minute, and then we either never get to it or it gets edited out or whatever. So I have a rule now that Drift Glass is never allowed to say, we'll get to that later or we'll do that later. We're just going to talk about everything It's a teaser, honey. It's not. It's a teaser. It doesn't work. It never works. <laughs> on, on next week's exciting episode. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I've gotten a, a number of uh, uh, messages and emails uh, pointing me to, mm-hmm. to a place I already visited, but that's lovely. It is um, lovely. Thank you, you guys, for looking out for yes. us. And who are going, I didn't know you had a call in the New York Times. Yeah. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Everybody that's didn't realize that Drift Glass, kind of is, Drift Glass, you know, we've been, everybody's been wondering about your secret identity. And yes. it's Paul Krugman. <laughs> it's Paul Krugman. Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I could be married to Paul Krugman. I think that would be very difficult. I'm not going to go into that, but I think it would be very difficult to be married to that intensity. I, ha ha. Because yeah, <laughs> my husband isn't intense at all. <laughs> I'm most fellow laid back fellow human. Um, the reason this came to our attention, this this happens all the time, by the way. It, it does. does. It, it does. Happens more. There is one day, if I were Paul Krugman, I'd plot it out on a graph, but I'm not. <laughs> so, at least by day. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, I, uh. I get a lot of these messages and more and more over the years. I'm, I'm, I know that you do, too. Well, it's because what we've been saying for eight years is becoming conventional wisdom, and we will never get credit for it, and that's okay. We but, will learn but, to live with that. <laughs> but it's still conventional wisdom. The, the It's conventional wisdom outside the perimeter. Yes, yes. Out in out in, out in in the, the wasteland where, <laughs> where the real, well, out in the real world, where yeah. we live. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's becoming more and more um, r- clear that the uh, walled castle, the Mask of the Red Death castle, where all of the media lives, is being penetrated by the plague out here in the real yeah. world. Yeah. And that we are getting closer and closer to scaring the shit out of these people because their pushback against this patently obvious fact that any fucking newsman who, who has half a brain and, and studies anything should be able to point to easily and and say with the same confidence of a weatherman pointing to a tornado that hey there's a tornado mm-hmm. um the same people who report on politics are not allowed to report on the central fact of american politics mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is which is bizarre beyond description and that central fact is that one of our political parties is uh wrong and hurting america and uh is using violence mm-hmm. to get what they want. And I mean that in all kinds of ways. Yes. Uh, and every now and then, that fact that it isn't both sides, mm-hmm. it is just one side. It might have been both sides 50 years ago, maybe 50 years from now, you know, when the Whig Party, <laughs> the, what will be called the David Brooks Whig Party, and whatever else comes up. Uh, but no, now at this point in history, and for several decades, this has simply been flatly untrue. And everyone involved, every single pundit, news reporter, commentator, public intellectual, every fucking one of them either knew or were too stupid to know, and which is a shame because it was their job to know. And we have McCorkle knew. Before we get too far into everything else, I want to talk about race for a minute. Oh, I, I was going to read actually read from the column. Oh, you're going to read from the column where he wants to fire David Brooks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You do that, and I, then I'll talk about race. I'll See just, how yeah. organized we are today, people. Yeah. It's it's Friday. We're tired. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's but but we we're going to uh, we we put this off till Friday because we knew there'd be indictments, and lo and behold. <laughs> 
We always start holding out for the indictments, people. And here they come on President's Day weekend. So how cool is that? Uh, there's a Paul Krugman in the New York Times. I believe it was yesterday, uh, whatever, uh, Thursday. You can look it up yourself called Budgets, Bad Faith and Balance. And I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs from it that are really re- – well, well, they're paragraphs that people literally sent me going, is this you? Come Drift on, man. Glassian. Come on. Yes. Fuck, is this really you? Come on. Out yourself, finally. Um, looking at all of this, and this is in reference to all the ruin that Republicans have visited on this country, should make you very angry. It certainly infuriates me. But my anger isn't mostly directed at Republicans. It's directed at their enablers, the professional centrists, both sides pundits, and news organizations that spent years refusing to acknowledge that the modern GOP is what it so clearly is. Boom. Why have Republicans become so overwhelmingly a party of bad faith? And not just about budgets, but everything else. The main answer is probably that the party's true agenda, dictated by the interests of a handful of super wealthy donors, would be very unpopular if the public understood it. So the party must consistently lie about its priorities and intentions. Then we jump ahead a little bit. Whatever the reasons for the GOP's bad faith, however, its reality has been apparent for a long time. Yet the gatekeepers of our public discourse, that would be David Brooks, that would be Chuck Todd, that would be all the people we talk about on this podcast all the time. The gatekeepers of our public discourse spent years being willfully blind to this reality. Meanwhile, many news organizations, which, by the way, gave Ryan, Paul Ryan, years of adoring coverage, Mm -hmm. treat recent GOP actions as if they were some kind of aberration, a departure from previous principles. They aren't. Republicans are what they always were. Now, there's no mystery about why people won't face up to the reality of Republican bad faith. Washington is full of professional centrists, David Brooks, whose public personas are built around a carefully cultivated image of standing above the partisan fray, which means they can't admit that while there are dishonest politicians everywhere, one party basically lies about everything. News organizations are intimidated by accusations of liberal bias, which means that they try desperately to show balance by blaming both parties equally for all problems. End of story. End of story. And and, and Drift Glass, that does sound a lot like you. It sounds eerily like <laughs> me. And so I, I posted literally that and asked the question, is it wrong to put a donate button at the end of a Paul Cruz <laughs> I don't think so. I really don't. I don't think so. I don't think Um, so. At least you should be able to get a $5 donation out of... From Paul Krugman. From Paul Krugman. (laughs) Dip dip into that Nobel Prize money, okay? Nobel Prize money. Or we know that Wall Street... We know that New York Times columnists get paid something. Uh Um, Uh Take a couple of bucks. Just a couple. And kick it my way. Or kick it to the Professional Love Podcast. Or If Paul Krugman wrote you a check, you would never cash it. That's the thing. You'd frame it, so... It I would be you know, you'd photocopy and frame it when, no, and then cash it. You would write me a much bigger check than Paul Krugman. Who? Much bigger, David Brooks. Please. He should write you a huge check. Please stop talking about me. Please. Just you know, <laughs> look, I'll make you this as a bribe. Deal. You know, if you can get Donald Trump's lawyer to pay me one hundred thirty thousand dollars, I will oh. stop talking about you. Speaking of which, yes, we have a new sponsor. We do. Yeah, new fake sponsor. sponsor here at the Professional uh-huh. Left Podcast. Yeah. Do you have campaign fund expenditures that you can't file under porn star payoff? But miscellaneous legal fees is just fine? (gasps) Help is just around the corner with the campaign finance accounting firm of what? (laughs) What? (laughs) Takes your campaign finance books and painstakingly fakes the entries like the Federal Election Commission is actually going to look at them. Yeah. Instant pot eats your heart out. What? (laughs) will cook your campaign finance book so well, it will look like somebody wanted to hide shit everybody knows happened anyway, but nothing matters anymore. You think the House Oversight Committee was going to release a majority report hurting a Republican? What? 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 (laughs) It's a... It's a... So, you know, you can join the campaign finance accounting firm of what? And uh, have all your campaign finance... Reporting needs met. Really, and you can do pass through bribes to anyone. <laughs> you uh, can, right? They, they do lots of lots of work for anything lots of noble causes. Absolutely. Um, apparently, uh, uh, there are uh, Ronan Farrow, or as we now call him, Ronan the Accuser. Ronan the um, Accuser. 
You need uh, to tell people because I didn't remember that name. Yeah, Ronan the Accuser is the villain uh, or one of the villains of um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And, it, and, a, and a comic book character, you know, straight up comic book. But I think given the fact that Ronan Farrow is, is doing really good reporting. Mm-hmm. And he dropped a story today about uh, New Yorker, former right? Playboy playmate and Donald Trump and bribes and the mechanism that is used to make sure that these women are paid off and they never talk to anybody. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, this was all being done at the time that Melania Trump was recovering from pregnancy mm-hmm. and uh, didn't have all her baby weight off. And right. Donald Trump was fat shaming his, you know, his 125 pound, 5'11 wife was, you know, 135 pounds, which is mm-hmm. ballooning up. And she's not hot anymore. Because she just had your son. She just had your son. And so, uh, you know, go bang some porn stars while you're while you're waiting and, and go on Howard Stern doing... and yeah. fat shame your wife. Yeah. And uh, it's all just part of the joke, you know. And, oh, it's uh, just it's jokey joke. It's just entertainment. I do okay, want to talk just... about race for a minute, and then we're going to go to do, do news roundup. I yeah. finally, finally, finally brought myself earlier this week before the shooting and everything to sit down and watch David Letterman's interview with Barack Obama. I know I'm way behind, but I just couldn't watch it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just I couldn't watch it because I just knew I was going to get too upset about the fact this guy isn't our president anymore. Um, And... I loved the fact that they took time out to talk to John Lewis and to talk about the Edmund Pettus Bridge, which we use as a motif frequently uh, in our writings and so forth. Drift Glass came up with this great line of, you can't stand on both sides of the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And something clicked for me when John Lewis and David Letterman were crossing that bridge and David Letterman said... What's on the other side of the bridge? And John Lewis said, the vote. Yep. Both sides don't take away the vote from brown people. Mm -hmm. We really don't need to say anything else. You can simplify your message to that. And I think that message should shame the right people, those Beltway professional centrists. Yeah. Yeah. Who are overwhelmingly white anyway, but mm. uh, really that that is incontrovertible. Both sides do not try to take that away. Uh, either you believe that people who are not white are legitimate citizens and legitimate voters in this country, or you don't. And right. if you don't, then you're a Republican. Yeah. So do you believe that people that are not white, that are not Anglo-Saxon white quote unquote Christian people deserve a say, an equal say as to where this country is going. And if you don't, you're a Republican. Yeah. Uh, and racism is everything in terms of this White House. That's everything they're doing is to undo Barack Obama, to undo his legacy, to undo uh, Medicaid, <laughs> all of it. It's all about Making America White. Uh, let's do a news roundup. That's a wonderful idea. All right. You want to start? I, and, I would and, only... and, and we are getting into a little bit of the of the situation with the shooting and after the news roundup. Um, yeah. I, I do want to thank people that wrote to me and said, I'm worried about you, Blue Gal, because I know how personally you take these things. And um, we went yesterday and picked up Junior Dude at college and brought him home mm-hmm. and kept yep. kept news radio off the whole trip. Uh, and that that helped. <laughs> so just because not, not because we're burying our head in the sand. No, because no, you, we we knew what had now. happened, and we we had yeah. read a you know and had had covered the story and knew what was going on. Yeah. But uh, I personally did not need a day of of rage and analysis about it at that point. No, no, it's and it's 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 listening to reruns at this point, not for the people who were affected. The victims, not for the, the people who died. Right. I but honor for... the victims, and I did when I came home, went through, and any story that had a victim speaking or a parent of a victim, not a victim, yeah. but the victims are dead, but the parents, the family and parents of the victim speaking have been incredibly articulate and, again, um, 
we're going to get into that in depth. But let's do a news yeah. roundup, and then we'll get into that in depth. Fast, fast news roundup. Um, Steve Bannon, apparently, you might have heard of him before, uh, star of stage and screen. Uh, he invented <laughs> a guy named Donald Trump and dumped him in our laps, and now he's the president. Uh, Steve Bannon was roasted on an open spit by Rob Mueller, apparently, this week for like over 20 hours. Well, and it's hard to say whether he was roasted because apparently he answered every question that Robert Mueller put to him. And uh, one colleague at Crooks and Liars said, well, you know, Steve Bannon is uh, nothing if not a liar. Sure. And I said, yeah, but you know what? Steve Bannon may have lying in his uh, DNA, but he also has vengeance in his DNA. Right. And if he wants to get back at Trump for any reason, oh. <laughs> or anyone well, I... in Trump's circle for any reason. Yeah, well, it's you know. also, there's and there's two things at play here. We're gonna, we, we are gonna move, because an awful lot of news happened this week. Uh, but it, a couple of things are pretty clear. First of all, Steve Bannon is the smartest one of the bunch. Yeah, probably. yeah. Yeah. Um, he's a better liar mm -hmm. than Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is just a stupid. He's a lies like a four year old. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I standing there with a hammer in front of a table that's been smashed, blaming a bee. Mm -hmm. You know, just and and does it every day. Mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump is a, is a moron when it comes to lying. He just gets away with it because the people around him enable him. Mm -hmm. But Steve Bannon, number one, number two, uh, I'm getting the feeling that since no one will join the White House and everyone's trying to get the hell out of the White mm -hmm. House. Uh, Steve Bannon's figuring out that this pony is just about rode into the ground. Yep. Uh, we've you, we've squoze him for about as much white nationalist uh, agenda of our white nationalist fascist um, racist agenda that we can, mm -hmm. and he's just about squoze out of juice. Mm -hmm. So time for Steve Bannon to kick him to the curb and move on to the next fascist, uh, or go make movies or whatever. But he's probably decided. That he's gotten all he's going to get out of this asshole, and uh, he, this asshole's headed for the political graveyard, possibly impeachment, certainly a catastrophically failed presidency, mm -hmm. and time for Bannon to wash his hands of it and move on to the next. Well, guy. and you just made me think of something, which is you know how um, people in uh, regular businesses that you have worked for um, uh -huh. will get promoted to their um, highest level of incompetency. Yeah, Peter right? Principle. Peter yeah. Principle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, in in right wing media world, if you're disgraced at a certain level, you can always go one level down. Like if yeah. you're too disgraced to be on Hannity right now, you can go be on Alex Jones and spin your wheels there sure. until you've gained enough. I mean, this is what is happening with a lot of right wingers right now. Um, I'm thinking about Sheriff Clark, how he was on Fox and Fox and Fox, and now he's on other things, and yeah. uh, Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh, you know, was was a nut job three years yeah. ago. Got still kicked is, out. He still is, but he has he is rebuilding his lifeboat to be the reasonable never Trumper, mm -hmm. and he's going to wind up on MSNBC in five years or somewhere like he'll that. Write yeah. a book. Yeah. Yeah, he's on CNN now, but he'll he'll find his way. Oh, Howie Howie Kurtz was a washed up hack, and now he's the exactly uh, reliable sources on Fox. Exactly. You can trust him. He's talking about the media. You can always take a step um, down and then take a step right back up. It's it's lily pad journalism. Yeah, well, and, and Ben Dominic, he's one of my favorite. <laughs> Dominic, she's one of my favorites. Who was a, who really was a washed up plagiarizing yep. Yep. shithead. Yep. Until his good friend Chris Hayes decided to give him lots and lots and lots and lots of free airtime and treat him like a bro. And now he runs the Federalist and is on uh, CBS and other places. He and gets really, really it, mad when you ask him who's funding that website. Yeah, he also gets really, really mad when you point out the fact that his he's a plagiarist. Bla <laughs> well, his blazing headline last week was, uh, "It's true, the American media hates you." Yeah, just yeah. absolute flat out. And I think the American media is broken almost beyond repair, but not for the reasons he's giving. He's giving this. It's all you know. It's it's, it's owned by the liberals, and you were right to be fearful of them, et cetera. And he's gone if he went off and married, you know, Meghan McCain. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, he married, as, as they say, he married the commandant's he daughter. He did. So he's do doing all the suck up, um, loser, soulless things you do to get ahead in politics. Uh, and he, But he wouldn't have been able to bootstrap him up to this level were it not for the fact that he got help from his bro, mm -hmm. from, from Ezra Klein. My man, Ezra, how's it going, bro? Let's go, bro. Broski, broski, so, go, so good. And uh, Chris Hayes. And that's generational, like, and that's racial, and that's gender, 
and that's yeah. education level and all kinds of things. And it's also a belief that politics is just a game, and whatever side you're on, whatever, we'll get along because we're all in the news business. Right, right up okay. until right up until the revolution. Right. And then you realize, oh, I'm going up against the wall, but I, I'm friends with that guy. Yeah, right. Oh, no, dude, no. They were never joking. Yeah. Uh, unrelated to completely to that, Rick Gates is close to a plea deal with Robert Mueller. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and unrelated to that, <laughs> uh, Robert Mueller uh, just indicted, his federal grand jury just indicted 13 Russian nationals and organizations. And you had names for them, right? I did. Uh, Flinsky? Uh, Michael, Michael Flinsky, uh, Paul Metafortovich, uh, <laughs> There are a few others like that. Steve and, and Bananalevich. And, and Steve Bananalevich. <laughs> and Reince Priebus. Because and Reince Priebus. <laughs> it's made up name to start with, so why, why gild that fucking lily? All right. Uh, uh, the FCC is investigating whether its chairman, Ajit Pai, improperly coordinated with Sinclair on yeah. rule changes that benefited who? Sinclair. You, the taxpayer. No, not you, the taxpayer. No, Fuck you, the taxpayer. No. Why? Because there's, <laughs> there's no part of this machine, this Republican machine, that is not completely thoroughly no, corrupt. Exactly. None exactly. Of it. None of it. Uh, Paul Ryan, speaking of, of school shootings and corrupt Republicans, Paul Ryan doesn't think the time is right to wage political battles. Uh, he just wants to wait until the facts are in, which, as Chris Hayes, uh, to give him great credit, last night – masterfully pointed out is what he says after every yep. literally exactly what he's, he has one press release that he reads after every mass shooting which is let's not judge let's not rush to judgment let's wait till all the facts are in and then he just walks away from the podium yep. and and nobody kneecaps him and says no 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 come on back mm-hmm. let me ask you about the last 17 school shootings right what about those but nobody asks those questions because nobody wants to because nobody does because everybody wants to go. to go to lunch or have a drink at some georgetown bar that's why right. yeah okay and speaking of those, yep. Let's uh, talk about Trump? the shooting. Yeah, jump you in Florida. Want to jump right in or, uh, yeah. Trump blamed the students and the neighbors for not reporting their suspicions about the school shooter, except they did. Yeah, including the shooter's mother. They and did. They, uh, FBI and law enforcement ignored it because it's a white kid. And what are you going to do? Kid. Yeah, white kids. They're they're uh, homeless. Also, one of the first things Trump did as president was to undo a regulation that would have made it more difficult for people with a known mental illness to buy guns. Uh, not to mention what the governor of Florida did. He signed five laws that made it easier for teens and other people who should not have guns to have guns. Uh, Trump's budget would cut millions of dollars from the national instant criminal background check system. Uh, it was Republicans who passed legislation prohibiting the Center for Disease Control from studying gun violence as a public health issue. Yeah. So and this also is another... uh, law... Uh, preventing uh, victims of mass shootings from suing gun manufacturers or holding them liable for the uh, massive carnage that their product causes. So let's all sit and ponder, as with the issue of race, Mm -hmm. what do all of these have in common? The fact that, and and we can refer uh, to Morning Joe this morning Mm -hmm. uh, if we want to, uh, because all over Morning Joe this morning, there was a great wringing of hands, by About Charlie both sides, Dent yeah, both sides, and and, and by uh, by Anand. I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name, but he's a regular guest on there. Just we as a people, mm-hmm. we have all done this. We collectively, all of us, are to blame for these everything. And uh, Charlie Dent, who's leaving the Congress and leaving the leaving his political career behind, but it stopped long enough. To explain that the leaders in both parties are to blame for this, they are this they are how... uh, prisoners of their base. Right. The the Democrats whose base wants them to pass uh, reasonable gun safety, <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, Republicans who all have A ratings from the NRA. Yeah, okay. And, and as as one of uh, Obama's speechwriters pointed out today, uh-huh. um. The, the whole because the, there was the whole thing. Well, why didn't Democrats do any of this when they control? Well, actually, the Democrats uh, had a fully uh, a comprehensive suite of legislative and executive um, uh, proposals. Uh, Barack Obama talked about it in the State of the Union address in 2013. It was Republicans who were beholden to the NRA who wouldn't let any of this out of the box, yep. who blocked everything, blocked every step of the way. Yep. And if you look, if you look at today's. Um, See how deep this disease goes. In the the editorial board of the New York Times today, uh, wrote a, a whole article about how we should 
we should overcome the NRA. We should sweep them aside. These people, you know, shouldn't be holding us in check. They shouldn't be choking our system to death. Never mentioned the word Republican. Yeah. Well, and this was uh, Mike Barnacle today. Yeah. It, at, at this point, it just becomes comedy. I'm sorry for to bring comedy into this tragic event, but Mike Barnacle just made it into, oh, come on. This is just stupid. He right. suggested that three great Americans. Three great Americans. Three great Americans. You got that, people? We come together. Uh, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama. All fine presidents. Should should get together. You know, get together like like they did to help Haiti. Right. They should get together and primary Republicans who are beholden to the NRA. That's right. Raise money. Raise money. Raise $100 million to form an organization not the National Rifle Association, but the National Gun Safety Association, mm-hmm. uh, to primary Republicans who are beholden to the NRA. Let's process that for a second. Why don't Clinton and Obama just elect Democrats? Right. Why would Barack Obama <laughs> why would they, raise money is, for Republicans? This is why I'm laughing, folks. Yeah. Well, and, and again, Mike Barnacle, because all of them wear a shock collar around right. their genitals. Right. And mm-hmm. anytime they suggest that it might be one party or the other that is mm-hmm. responsible for a good thing or a bad thing, right? Um, someone, Phil Griffin, presumably up in the control booth, gives them a, about ten thousand uh, shock to the genitals. So Mike Barnacle, well, I think I think it's just that Joe Scarborough marches up to Phil Griffin's office and says, "Get him out of here! I don't want him on NBC, MSNBC anymore." Well, that's it. And enough that's... people that's happened to yes, it has that they get fired because Joe Scarborough doesn't like them. And so Mike Barnacle. Has mm-hmm. to sit there, and Mike Barnacle's an old man, and yes, watching he... this old man twist himself into these pretzel shapes is painful to watch because you know he doesn't do any stretching. And it's not, not enough. It's shape. not enough that he said that George W. Bush is a fine American. Yes, <laughs> but it, that's the point. It has to be George Bush too, yeah, because yeah. all of these presidents, you know, Democrats and Republicans, blue guys. Why can't they get together and fix the Republican Party? Have to all be <laughs> fine presidents, and they're all fine people. They're great Americans, blue gal. No, George Bush was a fucking disaster. Yeah. And he still well, is. And, he, and besides, he's, he's at home painting his toes in the tub right. so that, you know, people forget about him and he doesn't get lynched by an angry mob of Americans who realize they were lied into war. Please don't talk right? to me. Please just don't mention And Because we, we've, we've passed the phase where we're going to pretend George Bush never happened. Right. This, right. this all follows the same pattern. We've passed the point where... We're going to pretend George Bush never happened. That's called the Tea Party. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. Tea Party was created because the Republican Party not only needed a cover up for the fact that it voted for the worst president in modern history, but that a black guy got elected. Right. And so we needed an outlet for the inherent racism of the Republican Party, and we needed to pretend George Bush never happened. Well, now we're past that, so we can now we want to now we want to move on to the phase where we look back fondly. Mm-hmm. Well, Donald Trump is bad, but you know he's unique. Yes, right. Trumpism. It's Trumpism. This is just a, this is a sui generis. Republican presidents have never been this bad before. Yeah, they kind of have been. And anybody who lived through it knows that. But Mike Barnacle doesn't want to get his ass fired and end up on a park bench in Boston Commons. So he's going to sit there and say, you're right, Joe. Whatever you say, Joe. Yes, three great Americans. And George Bush is one of them. And everyone will just nod their head and say, yes, that's true. And isn't it a shame how we all, all of us, we together, we as a group, we as a society, we as a culture, did all of everything bad in our society is happening because we let it happen. Yeah. And nobody, <laughs> nobody's there, nobody's there to say, but that isn't true. Right. That just isn't true. Because they don't, because the idea of having someone at the table who would bring that up terrifies the shit out of these people. And that's a good thing. That's why Paul Krugman can write these things. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Did did Paul Krugman then go on Morning Joe and have Morning Joe read his column to him? I don't think that happened. I don't think that's part of the show's... I don't know. (laughs) Uh, 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 Moving on to our news roundup. Yes. uh, Donald Trump has set the record for the longest period of time without a formal press conference in the last 50 years. And nobody's complaining about that. Because it's it's trivial. Compared to all all the crazy criminal shit he does every day... All the racism that just comes blasting out of his mouth every day and all of his surrogates out there who feel utterly liberated to embrace their inner clansmen and be who they really were, like Laura Ingram. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, this is, is like, oh, didn't hold a press conference? Well, yeah, that would have derailed any other president. Here right. it's just a rounding error. So, 
Let's well, move and on. did you notice he invented a um, move from Korea to Detroit of a GM plant? Really? That didn't actually happen. And f- while the cameras were rolling in the cabinet room, Donald Trump picked up and read, so apparently he can read something, read a headline from the Wall Street Journal about GM closing a plant in Korea, which they are doing. And apparently the unions in Korea are really mad about this. And uh, GM is trying to move some workers around to give these union workers jobs elsewhere. But they are closing a plant in Korea. And uh, Trump read this headline, and then he added to it, and they're moving to Detroit. Oh, definitely. They're moving to definitely. they're not. They're not moving to Detroit. Absolutely. And And then he said, and you wouldn't be hearing this if Donald J. Trump wasn't president. Well, you're damn right we wouldn't be hearing it if Donald right. Trump wasn't president because you just lied. Many people so, told me uh, at a future point in time, at some certain point in time, many people told me the Detroit plant will be moved to Detroit. No, uh, no, Donald. No. It's it's a lot. You just made that up. I would be... And no one stood up and said, Ex- excuse me, Mr. President, a correction. That's not correct. Not one of them. Not one member of the National Press Corps ever, or ever does cabinet. this. They never – They well, his cabinet are basically his, his boot blacks and I, lackeys. I realize so. that. But can you uh-huh. imagine any other – any Democratic president in history? I can't. But of course I can't. No. But the, the – the, can you imagine if Obama did this game has right. – It's over. Has, but I, it's I, course. I get it. I get uh, it. But, it, but here's the thing. It is important. It, it is vitally important because Blue Cal talked about um, um, Barack Obama on Letterman. Yeah. It's really important not to forget yeah. what it felt like, even as, as frustrating as it was, even as as the Republican Party completely embraced its nihilism and vandalism and just shut the place down, blocked everything, sabotaged everything. It was It's very important to remember what it was like to have a competent, mm-hmm. intelligent, calm, rational, decent family man in the White House. Yeah. And, and not for, hold on to that. It's, you know, we're not going to have that back. But it's it's really important not for especially for us for us on the left, as painful as it is, to to remember what it was like before Pearl Harbor. Yeah, you know yeah. before, and it's really important to contrast that because we're getting to the point where we're just doing internal contrast to current Republican behavior. And and, and I wanted to add to that that uh-huh. you're you're right on my wavelength here, Drift Glass. I try to be baby. Um. Very often throughout the week, I will get an email from one podcast listener or another saying, uh, you know, I'm I'm now buried in the bad news of today. I just yes. – I can't function with where this is. I'm going to go have a drink or whatever. But please – we're looking so forward to the podcast this week because you'll make me feel sane again. But right now I just feel insane because of all the bad news. And it's really – important, I think, to separate out the bad things that are happening from the incompetent things that are happening and the character things that are happening. Yes. Because Donald Trump's character is horrible. He ha- He's a bad person. Yes, That's, through and through. You know, sleeping with porn stars, uh, cheating on his wife, treating his wife like shit. Now, now grabbing po- gra- uh, some of that is actual crime. I realize some of the grabbing, posting, and the sexual assault and so forth. Yeah. That part of it, that part of his character, there are actually crimes committed. That's different. But just his general overall character of how he treats human other fellow human beings, uh, you know, okay, that's one subset. And when Donald Trump is gone, and when he passes this mortal coil to go to hell, all that is gone, right? Yeah. Okay. Then there's the. Republicans are just fully incapable of governing part of right. it. Right. And so when uh, they cannot seem to get security clearance for 1,300 people in the White House. No, not 130. Not 130, 1,300. 1300. Yeah. <laughs> I, I multiplied it by 10. But see, you corrected me. So <laughs> we're, we must be Democrats, Drickland. <laughs> 130 people working in the White House without security. Maybe clearance. 140, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Depends on the it's headline. It's enough. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. And again, what would Hannity say if this was a Democratic White House? Uh, anyway, uh, that's a completely different uh, issue 
from the House gutting the Americans with Disabilities Act this week. Yeah. That is a completely different issue from the Speaker of the House giving the same press conference that he's given after every mass shooting. Yeah. Yep. Because those are policies that are hurting our country that will be fixed by electing Democrats to office. Well, and those are those right. are structural basic that's the DNA of right. the Republican right. party. What you're staring at in Donald Trump is the manifestation of the DNA of the Republican party. This is who they really are. Mm-hmm. And I, I got I will give it to um Jennifer Rubin. Yeah. Uh, someone commended to me the Slate podcast. Fine. I listened that she's at the 19 minute mark or something. I I'm not going to make you go look for it. But after giving the the obligatory um uh kissing the foot of the both sides do it and both sides this and both sides that she did get to the part where she said i was i'm i was wrong mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i was amazed i was appalled to learn how many racists there really were in the republican mm-hmm. party i had no idea of course you didn't because you don't you don't ever interact with actual you live in new york city you interact, right you interact with with washington republicans right. you're, you're right. you interact with david brooks republicans right. who's but whose whole job it was for decades to lie about the existence of the real Republican Party. That's all they did. I still don't buy it from her, though, because everybody who worked in a Republican campaign or was analyzing Republican politics knew that there was Louis Gohmert in Congress. Of course. You know, knew that and knew that that language got votes. Well, and, and just think about the people who who run campaigns at a national level and and develop marketing strategies. Yeah, right. Think about the think about the the um, amount of effort that um, that Madison Avenue, which is no longer Madison Avenue technically, but the ad industry devotes to understanding the the tiniest nuance of its audience's thinking in every little niche market. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to put a, a gay couple on this commercial and an interracial couple on this commercial, and all of which I'm highly in favor of, but. They really, really understand deeply this, the psychology of their audience. Right. Whereas Republicans would have you believe that having run Lee Atwater ads, you know, right. having run uh, slanderous bullshit, having having swift boated John Kerry, on and on and on and on and on, and on having, having eight years of Barack Obama yeah. being the Kenny New Serpent right. birther. That they have no idea they're a racist in they their party. No idea. Yeah. No, they, they have run racist after racist after racist. They have played to this base for decades and, and harvested the votes and suddenly they're all freaked out because, oh my God, there's a bunch of racists in the party. Right. Mm. And I don't, I don't buy it for a fucking minute. Right. I, again, you have two choices. Either you're too fucking stupid to do your job or you're a liar and yeah. you should be fired from your job. So, but, there's so you, but you were saying that Jennifer Rubin at least admitted she was wrong. She was wrong. The, oh my God, the Republican Party is full of a bunch of racists. Yeah. I didn't have any idea. I was shocked to discover blah, 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 blah. Fine. That's as far as she can probably go. Right. Um, and well, but, and she has also said in the past, I know I've mentioned this on the podcast yeah. before, that the only way to get rid of this is to elect Demo- a Democratic House of Representatives. And she's endorsed that. So, and we're going to get to David Brooks in a few minutes. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> not right now, because right now we're going to talk about the fact that Donald Trump blew up DACA. Yep. On purpose. On purpose with lies. Yeah, with lies. And then went on, then swaggered onto Twitter and unzipped his pants and said – the Republicans are working really hard on DACA, and Democrats are ruining everything. Those DACA people should really be mad at Democrats because Democrats are full of shit, basically what he said. Mm-hmm. And, and everyone was just like, whatever, really? dude. Really? Yeah. Really? It's not even subtle anymore. No. It's like, it's fuck you, I'm the president. I can lie to your face. I have a whole press corps who will lick up my shit and ask for seconds. I'm surrounded by a cadre of stooges who will lie all, all the time. And there's not a god. The only, po- the only police force the Constitution envisions to keep – Monsters like me in check is the Congress, and I own those fuckers. Yep. I have Paul Ryan's balls in one hand, I have Mitch McConnell's balls in the other, and every time I squeeze them, they jump. So what the fuck are you going to do about it? Yeah, I'm the docky hero here, and Democrats are the villains, and that's my story. I'm going to I'm going to Mar-a-Lago now, so kiss my ass goodbye. That's it. Yep. That's it. And and Donald, but for the record, if there is a record, if any future generation hears this, Donald Trump blew up DACA on person on purpose to hurt people. Yep. Because he likes hurting people. Yep. They're fucking sick. They like hurting children. They like hurting sick people. They like hurting poor people. It gets them off. Mm-hmm. And they so like he, lying and getting away with it. Yeah. Donald Trump likes that because that's power. That is power. Speaking of power, as we talked about, uh, Stormy Daniels got paid off. 
And uh, <laughs> apparently that broke her non-disclosure agreement. Yay. Oopsie doopsie. <laughs> what a shame now. Uh, in the and, ever, and, and, and you know that uh, people at The Guardian are going to be looking very, very carefully at all of the records they have. Actually, it's I think it's the Atlantic Monthly. Mm-hmm. That uh, all of uh, Michael Cohen's LLCs that he's filed in Delaware to uh, launder money, basically, for Donald Trump. <laughs> that he, he paid him out of his own pocket. Yeah, you know, every billing record that went through the RNC now from Michael Cohen is going to be gone over by muck, muckraker journalists with a fine-tooth comb. Yep, yep. And there's, there is some I, – I, I slam the pundit class because they do control the cameras and they control the lights and they control who sits at these stupid panels. But there are people down in the weeds doing mm-hmm. really good work, and I, I'm extremely grateful We're to them, grateful including to them. Ronan Farrell, yep. who I made fun of when he was at when MSNBC. he was a little kid, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't make fun of him anymore. No, he's working. He has, he's, he's showing that he can do the work, yep. He's done his profession proud, and, I, and nothing but applause from me. Uh, in the good news department, uh, Donald Trump's uh, unconstitutional, illegal, and utterly immoral Muslim ban, travel ban, was shot down by the Fourth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. Now, I'm sure they'll, they'll tweak it and try it again. And who knows what happens there? But there is someone out there with, with robes on who's trying to keep him in check. Yeah. And, and uh, the ACLU is working on that, too, so... Make sure you send your five dollars to the ACLU if you have an extra five dollars after you send us five dollars. And speaking of those people <laughs> in the White House who didn't have yes. permanent security clearance, yes, uh, about, there's apparently 130 of them. I just looked it up, and 47 of them report directly to the fucking president, yep. including Ivanka Trump, Jared Kushner, Rob Porter, Dan Scavino. Mm-hmm. All of whom have no business touching anything having to do with any secrets at all because they couldn't pass a goddamn FBI background check. And and apparently roll around in top secret documents at night. Yeah, uh, and, and, the, and, and the attend the president's daily briefing. Yep. Yeah, because that's, that's fun. That's fun. It's a, a fun party. Time. It's like breakfast, you know. Is it catered? Is it catered? It's yeah. Catered, you know who's yeah. going to be catering those from now on? <laughs> We're the good Lord split you. Emergency farewell party planners. Proud fake sponsors of the Professional Life Podcast. All right. That's right. Trump's inaugural committee paid nearly $26 million to an event planning firm that was created out of thin air in December 2016 by Melania's girlfriend. Yeah. (laughs) Stephanie Winston Walkoff. She's a great person. She's a great person. And suddenly she's going to receive $26 million in largesse from the Trump inauguration committee, which raises a shit ton of money. And nobody's quite sure where most of it went. I think we know where most of it went. Apparently, a fraction of it went to paying off hookers and prostitutes Mm -hmm. and porn stars. Uh, One week after Rob Porter resigned following allegations of domestic violence, Trump said that he's totally opposed to domestic violence. Totally opposed to it. There. Except that time that he ripped his wife's hair out because his hair was hurting. Come on. That one time. And raped her. Yeah. That one time. Just that one time. Yeah. Uh, And he also – well, we'll talk a little bit about Rob Porter in in a couple of minutes. Well, Um, uh, no, we'll talk talk about that now. Here's the deal. The shooter in Florida hit his girlfriend. Yes. This is this is a thing. You see, with mass shooters, there's a, always, always, always a history of domestic violence in their DNA, in their background, in their past. Yes. Violence against women and violence in general, it appears, is a right-wing thing. And I'm not saying that left-wing people never hit their girlfriends or never, never do that. But excusing it and making excuses for it is a right-wing thing. Yeah. Uh, And uh, the FBI office today admitted that uh, they did have tips on – and this kid's mother called the police Mm -hmm. for help with her crazy, violent kid. Mm -hmm. And nothing happened uh, except 17 kids died. Uh, the, there's something different about this, and I, I want to mention this. I, I There is a post at Crooks and Liars about this as well. What's different about this shooting? Yeah. Um, personally, what I think is different is looking back on Sandy Hook. That was so horrible that we can barely imagine it. Uh-huh. We, you can't imagine someone shooting a kindergartner and 
blowing them up. Uh, you can't imagine that violence against young children. You can't imagine someone having that desire to do that. And it, it's beyond belief that that, that happened. Uh, it, 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 the, the perpetrator in that instance was clearly so damaged that you cannot in any way identify with that crime. Right. Same with the, the sicko who shot up the church Bible study. Right. There's something so off about that. Yeah, so, mentally so, off. Yeah. Mentally yeah, ill and mentally off about that, that we mm-hmm. cannot comprehend it. Right. You're in, you're in Dahmer territory at this right. point. Right. Yeah. Right. We've seen movies about weird high school kids going off and getting violent. Heathers. Uh-huh. Heathers is a movie about that. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Um, there's a lot of movies about a teenager who is possessed by the devil or just violent or just a Nazi or just whatever. And the bad guy in this particular drama with this super spy mm-hmm. is a uh, under 25 white male. Well, American who, History X. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There, there's There are literally dozens of movies you can point to. And say, you know, the guy who didn't never had a girlfriend or hit his girlfriend and lost her or had a very weird relationship with his mother. Psycho is another one. You know, these white guys who had a weird situation in their lives and turned to violence. Well, they found a trope in movies, right? They found a a meaning. Mm -hmm. Uh, They they found a structure through which to express their violence, which involved killing people. Right. Right. And and they, they found rationale for it. They they found a racist rationale, or they found a, a religious or rationale. Or a revenge some... rationale. I mean, that's yeah, what Heather's it... is. It's just revenge against normalcy, so to speak, right. um, and the cruelty of high school. Uh, but that is a that is a trope. We we know we can I we can see that in our mind's eye, mm-hmm. because we've seen it on the screen. It's it's a fictional uh, storyline, you know, one of those major themes that can't miss from uh, Catcher in the Rye onward, you know, the the misunderstood loner, young Mm -hmm. white male who turns to violence to give his existence some sort of structure, as you said. Rebel without a cause. Right, right. Uh, And so since we can see that, that means it can happen anywhere. And that means it's the gun's fault, right? Because it 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 isn't just oh my god, this incredibly unusual situation happened where this incredibly sick person did something that is unthinkable to even somebody that has an arsenal at home. Mm-hmm. This this isn't unthinkable. <laughs> this is something oh. where hormones and a disconnected frontal lobe in your brain because you're an adolescent. Uh, plus whatever kind of mental abuse or, uh, whatever, whatever insanity might be going on in your, in your brain, plus social media, plus access to guns leads to mass murder. And we can all see, oh, I know that can happen in my school. Right. That's right. (laughs) This I is know possible. that can happen, right? And, and if it's possible, and if it's if it's even marginally predictable, then it is somewhat preventable. Right, right. And so the mothers that are screaming in the camera at, at Congress and quote unquote President Trump, mm-hmm. do something, do something. Are 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 getting it? Are getting that? Oh, this could happen at my school. I'm sending my teenagers to a high school, and you and I right now, I and mean, let's make it personal, are sending yeah. our girls to a high school that has bomb threats yep. frequently yes mm-hmm. it's it's getting to the point i mean this is this is the cry wolf situation that you really have to be careful about where kids joke about i've got to test this afternoon i hope there's a bomb threat mm-hmm. because they've been pulled out of school how many Repeatedly. times oh. six yeah, six, six in times. september yeah yep and, and run down the street they go down the street to the football field or to the church across the street and not being educated, wait, wait for the all clear from alcohol, tobacco and firearms. You know, the FBI office in Springfield, Illinois is very busy with their dogs and their scanners. 
making sure there isn't a bomb in the school. So we we get it. It it can happen and and therefore government is responsible for fixing it. And government is all of us making a decision to fix it. Well, and, and this is and little, and, and yeah. I'm just going to finish. Sure. This was a white school. Let's not leave yeah. race out of this, right? Yeah. This was a white school, and the and white parents who are educated, who have access to the internet, who have access to cable and you know whatever uh, social media technology is out there, are articulate and know that. Speaking into a microphone in full sentences at at this time in this week, you know, when all attention is going to be on you for a week, uh, holding it together to speak in complete sentences into a microphone, you're going to be on TV. And uh, that's a powerful thing. So I, it is different. Uh, and I was just going to add that it's different because um, – this time, I'm not mm-hmm. saying this didn't happen last time or the mm-hmm. time before. I'm saying I didn't notice it or no one pointed a camera in their direction. But this time, the students are yeah. also yeah. speaking and they're also very um That was my mature. point. Yeah. They're, they're also they're very articulate. mature. Yep. They're, they're standing in front of a camera going, look, we're kids. Yep. You're the adults. Your job is to fix this. Mm-hmm. So fix it. Well, and everybody and knew. And, th- and that, again, that's what I said. It's It's we knew this kid. We knew he hit his girlfriend and she left him and went off with someone else. We knew he made YouTubes about being a school shooter. Yeah. Everybody said he was the most likely in our school to become a school shooter. And no one did anything. So to be very inappropriate, I want to very delicately suggest something. Mm -hmm. Um, You have a structure in place at this sort of ground level where everyone knows this is going on. It's been reported to the authorities. It's gone up the chain of command. At some point up the chain of command, nothing happens. Right. This is what happened with this school shooter. This is what happened with Rob Porter. Yeah, yeah. It It isn't a surprise. He, there was testimony. There were photographs. There was ample evidence. There was an investigation. The investigation went on for a year. The people in authority goddamn well knew he was doing this months and months ago. And what comes out of the White House are a pack of lies that they then have to change suddenly on the fly because, oh, crap, there's evidence now and our timeline's fucked up. So let's go huddle and come up with a new set of lies. And Just like they did on the airplane for Don Jr. Right. And, and there is this problem. This is why you have checks and balances. This is why you have a government where each part of the government is supposed to hold all the other parts accountable. Mm-hmm. And when there is no accountability – this is what you have. This is what happens. Even in the best of times, if there's no accountability, bad things happen. Mm-hmm. You now have a Republican Party that is actively attempting to destroy this country. Yeah. That are, is perfectly willing. This is this is the part that, that this is the part that that galls me. From the Russian meddling in our elections to the constant constant witch hunts against their political enemies to um, absolutely. Uh, an embargo on any discussion of any gun control at all ever. This is all one party. Yeah. And each of those things has one thing in common, taking health care away from 30 million Americans, holding chip hostage, put uh, dangling the dreamers out over an abyss and then cutting the rope because that's fun. All of this is coming from one party. This is a party. And this is what I, I, I Hal Sparks, bless his heart, retweeted me, which is why is all this a surprise to you? Yeah. Haven't you read Atlas Shrugged? The whole concept of Atlas Shrugged is you must destroy the government. And yeah. every element of the Republican Party, whether it's the fundamentalists or the gun nuts or the wife beaters or the racists or whatever, all have one thing in common. They hate the fucking government because the government tells them to stop doing what they're doing, including the corporate side of it. So they all have a common enemy, which is any restriction on their incredibly obscene behavior. And now they've won. They, now they control all the arms of government, and now they're doing what they've said they were going to do all along. And, what, and the consequences of having no consequences and a government full of people who hate this country, really mm-hmm. fucking hate this country, and really, really are perfectly okay with Russians or mass shooters just ripping the guts out of it, yeah. is that they stand back and do nothing. Yeah. And if you try to do something, they'll restrain you. No, 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 no. We're not going to let you do anything. We're not going to let you prevent anything. We're not going to let you pass one single piece of legislation. We like 
the fact that this is happening in this country. We're completely cool with it because that's where our money comes from and that's where our power comes from. And our base, who we've cultivated for 30 years carefully, really does hate this country and really wants to see it burn. And at no point will we ever hear that on television because then you'd have to say one side is doing this and the other side is trying to stop them. So, uh, speaking of which, Donald Trump doesn't believe Russia meddled in the 2016 (laughs) After 13 indictments, he doesn't believe it. After 13 it. indictments, after... From a grand jury. <laughs> enough evidence to block the sun out. He still doesn't believe it. <laughs> and and there, there's a lovely little column by Jonathan Chait. I read a paragraph of which is, basically, there's there's pretty good... There's, there's reason to believe that Donald Trump is being blackmailed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot uh, of evidence to that. And yep. because there, at some point, you run out of any other explanation. Yeah. Other than, why, why aren't you doing sanctions? Everybody voted... Everybody voted for sanctions. Why are you doing – why this – oh, there is something else going on here. There's clearly something else going on here. And what's clear is there's a there's a small group of men and women who are dedicated prosecutors who are figuring this shit out. Yep. And, and, and by the way, Vladimir Putin has an actual official Twitter account. And after the shooting, he tweeted condolences to President Donald Trump. Yes, my good friend Donald Trump. Condolences. Yep. Uh-huh. Well, and, and the, the fact that you can no longer tell the difference between a Russian bot and a Republican on mm-hmm. Twitter, mm-hmm. it should tell you something about what they know about our Republican Party that our own media won't talk about. Yep. Yep. That's it. They know us better than the for-profit media is able to say. Well, and it, it, exactly. is They're not able to say it. Uh, Donald Trump wants to raise your gas t- your gas uh, prices twenty five cents, which is fine with me. Uh, except it would wipe out more than sixty percent of the bonus gains <laughs> for all those little people <laughs> that they got from their giant tax giveaway to billionaires. I you have know, said for thing- for I have said since twenty fifteen that the one thing that would turn MAGA away from Donald Trump is four dollars a gallon gas. Yes, yes. So that and might happen. Him, yep. Well, and him. Uh, I don't know, taking up Islam, but that's about it. <laughs> uh, and and for those of you who who love um, Blue Apron, I've got a, a real big surprise for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be, because this really the, the, the Republican plan, the Donald Trump plan for replacing food stamps, right? Uh, really is like somebody think tanked. How can we make being poor even more miserable and humiliating than it is? Yep, I know. Let's send them just a box of shit every month. A box of um, brown ri- dry white rice and peanut butter. Right. Yeah. Which is more than the people of Puerto Rico were getting. Yeah. yeah. But let's just send these folks a box of shit once a month. And if they starve or die or trade it or whatever, burn it, it's not a problem. We've checked that box. We've done. Well, it's also reform. a way to make one of Donald Trump's friends rich out of government yeah. taxpayer money again. You know. Yeah. Maybe the person uh, with the contract, with the no-bid contract, I bet you, to fulfill yeah. those boxes can fly first class from Milan to make it in time for the Donald Trump uh, praise hour at the cabinet meeting. I can I can tell you from personal experience. Yeah. Um, uh, someone I used to be married to mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, was involved in writing the um, uh, welfare to work guidelines for the city of Chicago. Yep. Uh, didn't like the fact that welfare to work was a thing. Thought it was atrocious. I thought it was atrocious too. Uh, it was like the fifth version of welfare to work that Republicans just said, you're going to sign this fucking thing. So Clinton signed it to his eternal shame, but they really kind of boxed him in. So a, 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 a plague on both your houses. Um, but even in the depths of welfare reform, um, when it was, let's just make poor people's lives more miserable. Nobody thought anything like this was a good idea. Yeah. And yeah. if you've ever been on food stamps or fuel assistance, which we or have, bit, yeah. or been unemployed, I um, have, yeah. The number, the amount of paperwork you have to do every month, yeah, qualify for your next month. The amount of the amount of stuff you have to prove. I've been in church basement meetings with city officials here, who were like talking about, you know, I got a friend who knows a guy whose cousin doesn't. These people who, who who are sincere public servants, mm-hmm. but down in their bones, they know that they know a guy who's got a friend who's got a cousin who's on unemployment, and he makes more than the guy next to him who works all the time. Yeah, yeah. And I like, do you know 
know what the maximum unemployment benefit is for Illinois? Do you know what you have to do in Illinois to qualify for unemployment? Do you know that every month you have to look for work? And if you don't, if you turn it down, you've got to justify why. Do you know that if you don't do any of that shit, they not only can take everything away from you, they can find they you. They can sue you. Yeah. Yep. And apparently this is a complete – the whole part about – there's already a shit ton of regulation you have to go through just to qualify for a pittance yep. is, of course, lost in the conversation because that fucks up the whole conversation about poor people are lazy and moochers and dumb. And the way to tr deal with them is to make them even more miserable. The Paul Ryan approach to poverty. Right. Just kick them harder until they become Paul Ryan. Um, and anyway, that but even in the depths of that, nobody in their right mind said, you know what we should do? Just scrap the whole food stamp program where people can go and buy things from the store and engage in normal commerce among people mm -hmm. and farms mm -hmm. are supported and, and local grocery are supported. Let's just send them a box of shit that nobody wants every month and call it call it done. Because nobody was that nobody would be open about being that sadistic and heartless and, and thuggish. But now, now it's cool to be that. Yeah. Now Republicans are out and proud uh, about their basic uh, depraved nature. And we can all sit and judge now. We can all sit back and say, okay, which party do you want to be a part of? Mm-hmm. And you, by this, you shall be judged. Um, speaking of judges, <laughs> Rachel Brandt, this is just this week, mind you. This mm -hmm. is literally the, the news from this week. The number three person of the Justice Department quit this week. Uh, in part, it is reported over the fear that she'd have to take over the Russia investigation. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants that because they're going to get fired by Donald Trump. <laughs> well, who, I mean, <laughs> And they'll be forever associated in their career with Donald Trump. <laughs> it's it's it's. I don't know what I would do if suddenly I woke up one day and, and had this dumped in my lap. Uh, I'm not up for it. It's not my profession. I'm not good at this sort of thing. Um, so I can't judge anyone else. But it's sad that someone would leave a, a, a career, mm -hmm. uh, a public service, because they're they're afraid that they're going to get stuck in the middle of a crossfire. Well, and uh, she went to work for Walmart. So she's not right. hurting. And she's probably had offers like that to go work in private industry forever because good lawyers who work hard and have a reputation as being you know kick ass at what they do get those kind of offers and yes. it's a choice that you're going to work for a federal prosecutor's officer for the DOJ because you believe in the law and you want to support the constitution or or you or you're a law and order right wing freak who just gets off on prosecuting people. And there are people like that too. And I'm, you Jeff know, Sessions. it's not all, it's not all golden servants of the public. No, it's Jeff Sessions. Over in the, it's Jeff Sessions. People like that. But you choose to take, you know, a lower salary, a lot more hard work, you know, 80 hour weeks. You're doing that for the people you feel you can tell you can at least tell yourself you're doing it for the people rather than for the Walton family. Right. Right. And uh, she chose not to do it for the people because that would associate her forever with Donald Trump. Uh, I wanted to bring up one other thing about food stamps while you were talking about that. Uh -huh. um, there is also a change going on with the food stamp program. Uh I want to find it, though. Donald Trump made the Trump administration made a change uh, in addition to the food boxes situation uh, to make it more difficult for states to uh, make the food stamp uh, program flexible during recessions. And I'm reading this from Governing Magazine, which is one of my favorite magazines, you know, to talk about government uh, policy because it is written for policymakers. Yes, we read uh, it here. The Trump yeah. administration, which often stresses the needs for states to have more flexibility, wants to give them less flexibility when it comes to food stamps. The federal government requires childless, able-bodied SNAP recipients to spend 20 hours a week working, paid or unpaid, or participating in state-approved training programs. If they fail to meet that requirement, they can only get food stamps for a total of three months in a three-year period. States are able to waive those rules through... Uh, economic downturns when unemployment is high and they know that the job center that is the state government job center I mean you and I went through this in 2008 right with a recession mm -hmm. everybody's thrown out of work you go to the job center and say uh, you know I need to renew my unemployment yeah yeah there's no jobs and they sign off on it 
Right. Because they can't find you a job. They're, you're right. you're siphoning off eighty thousand jobs a week, uh, in the in the federal government. Uh, you know, the statistics are there's just this huge drop off in employment. Nobody's going to find a job. They know you're not going to find a job that week. Uh, President Trump's budget for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, uh, which needs approval from Repu- from the Republican Congress to become law, would take away states' abilities to make exceptions and would impose work conditions during times of economic downturn. Uh, It adds up as the legal director for the Food Research and Action Council. That sounds like somebody you might have known at one time. Uh It it essentially adds up to a heck of a lot of cuts for food stamps because people will not be able to find work. And and this is what work requirements do. Work requirements are not there to make sure that people who are hungry know the value of work. It's to make sure that people who cannot buy a job also cannot have food. Right. That's and the purpose. There, let's face it. It's there to make people in the middle class and upper middle class and rich reinforce their theory that the reason people are poor is because they're moral failure. Except, Drift Glass, that when you mm-hmm. have a recession like in 2008, it was a whole lot of middle class people going on food stamps. Yeah. Yeah. And this is going to hurt them. This is going to hurt those middle managers who lose their jobs and are laid off. Because of a downturn in the economy, and yeah, they'll get, they might get their job back in a year. They might get a, another job in 18 months. Sometimes it takes that long. In the mm-hmm. meantime, the food stamp program in 2008 worked as it was supposed to work. A lot of people <laughs> went on food stamps to they feed did. their kids macaroni and, and cheese to, while dad was to, out of work or mom and was out of work. They went to food banks. They were yeah. at food banks, and they were at, uh, no, no. I remember I was in the long lines of that employment. I yeah. used to be on the other side of that right. line. Right. So I, I'm very, very familiar with this. Um, and the I flexibility like to, to be able to say, "Yeah, you're out of work. Everybody's out of work. Yeah. Here and we're go. just going to have this temporary need thing where we don't require you to." have a 20 hour a week job because we can't find one for you. Right. Um, that, you know, why put people through that agony? Well, because well, it, it tax cuts for billionaires. That's why. Well, here's, here's, I want to remind our listeners of two things. And then first we of have all, to end. <laughs> first of all, yes. yes. First of all, um, back during those dark days, mm-hmm. uh, there was a guy named Barack Obama who tried to extend unemployment benefits. Yes. Right. And, the Republican Party, long before Donald Trump ever showed up, held hostage the extended unemployment benefits during the worst recession in 70 years uh, for tax cuts. For the Bush tax, tax cuts. cuts for Bush tax cuts. Yep. And, cl- and shut down the government. And, and or, yeah, or we'll shut it down. Secondly, so let's be really clear. Mm-hmm. This is literally, it's the same goddamn party. The party hasn't changed one bit. It has a different leader, yep. the, the person out in front. But in 2012, mm-hmm. during the 2012 election, what did Mitt Romney run against the Obama administration? That the Obama administration planned to gut welfare reform by dropping work requirements. Yep. And of course, it didn't work that way, and it wasn't that simple, and it didn't amount to that, and it turned out that was a big fucking lie. Um, but the whole point being, the black guy wants to give the undeserving poor your money. Right. Right. And that it. And you know. Mitt Romney said, you know why Mitt Romney said that? You know, of soon to be Senator Mitt Romney. Mm-hmm. You know why he said that? Because he knew it would play with the Republican base. Right, right. Because that's who these fuckers are. Because these guys listen to Stuart Varney, who gets paid $10 million a year, to tell you that people on food stamps are moochers and getting, you know, they found that one guy to buy lobster with food stamps uh-huh. and uh, play him over and over again and show you that the welfare recipients and food stamp recipients are just a bunch of moochers. Right. Right. All, All right. right. I'd like to point out that the Donald Trump budget would add seven trillion dollars to the deficit. Remember the deficit? Remember yeah. how bad that was? Well, that was about, I thought that was what ago? all those Tea Party marches were about. Yeah. Apparently it was. Apparently we don't have a deficit anymore, so it's cool. Uh, not only does it add seven trillion dollars to the deficit over 10 years, but it slashes the ever loving hell out of Medicare, mm-hmm. Medicaid, all the other social programs, which Donald Trump promised he would never touch. Uh, so, but it's OK, because <laughs> you know what? Paul uh, Ryan is a numbers guy. He's a numbers guy. I'll, I'll <laughs> run the numbers. I'll make this work. Um, adding to that deficit, apparently, is that Scott Pruitt is routinely using your taxpayer dollars to fly first class and stay at luxury hotels yep. because being around peasants makes him feel queasy. 
because they say F you to him. And he doesn't they say like he's you fucking, he doesn't like random people to say, fuck, you're fucking up the environment. That was what I, they said. You're fucking had, up so, the environment. It wasn't even fuck you. It was, you're fucking up the environment. So he has to lay on a, an extra phalanx of guards and only fly first class and stay in only the best hotel. Only fly first class while his staff flies coach. Right. Not making because, that up. Yep. Because being around peons makes his tummy hurt. Um, and Jeff Sessions, because Jeff Sessions can never be too uh, racist. Yeah. Uh, called sheriffs, you know, the sheriff profession of sheriffing, a critical part of the, quote, Anglo-American heritage of law enforcement. Happy Black History Month, everybody. Happy Black History. And by the way, this month is the only month uh, in the next hundred years where there'll be no full moon. No so. full moon in 28 days. That's right. I did a little historical research uh, about the Tea Party this week, Drift Glass. Oh, tell me more about I it, I discovered Luke, that Dick Army's Freedom Works actually paid Glenn Beck a million dollars to talk about how great the Tea Party was on his Don't radio lie. show. Don't you lie. Don't you say those things about that man. That man is a saint, Blue Gal. Each yeah, week no. we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Booby. Booby would like you to know it's not your desk lamp. It's my heat lamp. We have that at our house, too. Barack Hussein, those, yeah. Barack Hussein, the Kenyan usurper, tells me, Blue Gal, that's not your Lenten journal. That's my massage table. I'm going to lie down right over it while you're writing, and you massage me. <laughs> oh, this is so good. You misspelled, you misspelled paraclete. <laughs> I'm always writing about the paraclete. That's not just for Lent. No, no, it's every day. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Eric wrote us today because I sent him a thank you note for his donation. Okay. I'm trying to get up, caught up on those. He said, thank you for all your efforts. I love listening every week. Please dedicate my modest contribution to Drift Glasses Whiskey Fund. <laughs> Some weeks, I think it all should go to Drift Glass's Whiskey Fund. I, 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 I can't say myself it would be uh, immodest of me to say that. But, uh, but, but uh, we appreciate that because uh, he's an angry writer some days. Some, well, some, and some days, days he, gets, he, gets, a, he gets tired and exhausted of writing some days. I, 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 I am tired. Of, some days I am genuinely tired of writing, putting words together. Not yeah. that. I don't enjoy writing like crazy or speaking like crazy. I love those things. But, man, when you look back 13 years mm -hmm. and see, the, see I, I was writing exactly what I'm writing now 13 years ago Yeah. Uh, about politics. Yep. And just it, it gets a little tiring sometimes. That's all. Well, I want you to know that I appreciate the beautiful Valentine's Day cards you gave me this week. Well, thank you. I didn't he, write those. I he, didn't hallmark he, he had Hallmark write them. But one of them was the kind of valentine that i actually showed my daughters and said find a man like this who appreciates you like this so just so it's, you know it anyway. said we're going th we're going for drive through and doing it twice <laughs> no it didn't it said no, it something didn't. to the effect of it it's the honor of my life to love you i think it said that's yeah and i went much. oh my that's true <sighs> a, and a, a true a true life uh, valentine story Yes. Uh, I was I was perusing the cards and found, oh, this is perfect. And then I realized, oh, this is the one I got you last year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and ah, happy crap. anniversary, by the way. It is yeah. 10 years ago today. Oh. I looked it up. 10 years ago today, we met face-to-face -face for the first time at a Shakespeare Damn. sister meetup. Talking about burying the lead, Blue. That, <laughs> the, now we have to redo the whole no, goddamn podcast. Oh, God. <laughs> Approximately... 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details, both our PayPal, postal address information, GoFundMe, Patreon. All of it is over there at proleftpod.com. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage, iced or hot, for yourself, buy one for us. That's enough. You will have done your bit. But remember, this is not charity. This is our job, and you are helping us pay our salary. So thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are thinking one thought. Black Panther, baby, Black Panther. Let's think about living 
Podcast is recorded under Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.